We're not going back, church. Church will never be normal again. I hear the father. I hear the statements. I'm, I'm online more than I've ever been. I'm addicted to Instagram live. You get it. But I've seen it. I've read it. I've listened to it. Everybody's talking about let's get back to normal. Let's get back to our buildings. Let's get back to our events. Let's get back to our programs. And all of those things are wonderful. And I'm sure a lot of that will happen. But I'm here to tell you, it'll never be the same again. A new normal's coming. Wow. There's some things we got to let go of. Wow. And I want to give you just three in conclusion on this Easter 2020. It took all the courage within That's my crazy. heart and my soul to pause on Easter when I know I have friends and you have though. friends who desperately just, just need to hear the like message of Jesus and how he forgives. To so I want to take a risk here for a moment as a pastor. Let me that. be your pastor. Let me speak to our church. Here's what's happening to our church. And here's what collectively we all have to welcome in our life. We have got to let go, number one, of principles and programs. We need less principles and we need less programs and we need more person. Christianity is not built on the backs of principles, concepts, ideals, and smoothly run programs. Oh, my brothers and sisters, before there was principles and programs, there was a resurrected Jesus. The church didn't start with a building. The church started with a resurrection. The church started with the power of the Holy Spirit. The church started in a tiny little upper room with a few fearful followers. We need the person of Jesus. Let me speak to this just for a moment. So much of the church, we've connected ourselves to the way we used to experience Jesus. And that's what Mary was doing. She was hugging Jesus. She's like, everything's normal. This is exactly the way I've known him. And Jesus is trying to communicate with the first words of his resurrected self. He's saying, Mary, it's not going to be like it was. You're not going to be able to hold me like you used to. But I'm going to be inside of you by my spirit. We've got to let go of some things just like Mary did. One of the things we need less of, as I said, is principles and programs. Here's, here's the thing we're not talking about. Principles require knowledge. Mm. Programs re require an understanding. Mm. You can go through a program, you can learn principles, and you can miss the man. You can miss the person. Has that happened in your life? It's happened in mine. Sometimes I'd rather take notes than experience Jesus. Sometimes I'd rather, rather feel smart and sharp mm. and dialed in than broken and humble mm. and in need mm. of a savior and a person. Mm. Church home, our future is not principles and programs. Our future is a person. Mm. Our future is not knowledge mm. and mere wisdom for Jesus is the knowledge of God. He is the wisdom of God. Our, our, our future is interaction. I would like us to let go of knowledge and embrace more interaction. We have learned something in the middle of this pandemic. I need a savior. I need a person. Oh, my brothers and sisters who are here for the very first time, can I urge you, this community, this platform, this gathering of worshipers and pursuers and those interested we do not exist just to disseminate knowledge and wisdom and principles and concepts we are here simply introducing you to an interaction with a person who is alive and his name is jesus don't cling to me please you've never experienced me before i wonder if that's some of the messaging that's coming out of this time I believe it is for our church home and mm -hmm. I'm coming to a close, I promise. Mm -hmm. Second thing I think we need to let go of, not cling to, Ow. is this word omission. And what I think we need more of is mission. Mm -hmm. What is omission? Omission is to delete or leave out. Mm -hmm. Omission has happened in this church and a lot of churches because knowledge puffs up. And so, because we know the story, we know the teachings, we know the principles, our self-importance leads us to omit people and people groups. Mm. 
If you grew up like me, I grew up in a, in, in a home that wasn't perfect. It was great. My dad was my hero. Boy, it seems like in the 80s and the 90s, I know that seems like a million miles away. We kind of knew who was in and we knew who was out. Mm. We concluded that them and they mm. won't ever get saved. Mm. Why? Well, because we know. Mm. The Bible tells me so. Mm. If you don't, you're out. The Bible tells me so. We gotta let go of this corner on the market we think we have. Wow. Because we got a Bible in our lap and the spirit of Jesus in our heart, we think somehow it's prudent upon us to pass judgment. Wow. Not true. No. No. In an extraordinary, a painful, horrific pandemic seems to posture and position us such an awareness to the plight hmm. and the fragility of humanity. Hmm. We need less opinion. Yeah, we do. And more empathy and more love and more care. I, I think we need to stop clinging to omission and start embracing mission. Hmm. What is mission? Mission is framed by phrases like this in scripture. For God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Mission is framed by the great John 3.16, for God so loved the world that whosoever, mm -hmm. that's mission. That's mission. Enough with omission. Mm -hmm. Let us now give ourselves to mission and mandate, which is love and care and spreading the news about Jesus. And I promise this is, I believe, my third close on Easter 2020. Mm -hmm. I close with this. Don't cling to me, mm. Jesus says to Mary. Don't cling to me. I truly believe that was Jesus preparing Mary for a new era and a new dispensation so she would embrace the spirit of Jesus. I believe what we need to let go of and stop clinging to so that we can embrace the now and the new. We need less temple and more home. Mm. Judah, what does, that, what does that mean? Are you telling me to stop going to church? Do you know you can stop going to church and still be the church? Do you know that? Please hear me now. I know it's Easter. You're like, Judy, you can't be careful now, Judy. This is getting great. Do, do, do you know that you cannot attend a building and still be the church? Whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa. That's right. It's we true. can still gather, and we will. Yeah. I'm not announcing today that we're done with buildings, mm -hmm. but I'm announcing today the way we used to relate to our buildings wow. is changing. Wow. It's funny, I look back at my history and I look back at my life and so many of my encounters with Jesus were facilitated in an advance or a retreat or a conference or a convention and I have never believed in those things more. We're still, that's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Boy, I gravitate to the way I experienced Jesus. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's this whole world that is opening to the church mm -hmm. things are going to be global and things are going to be mobile mm -hmm. and mission is going to increase and our effectiveness is going to be astronomical mm -hmm. what do I mean less temple more home well the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 46 that the first century Christians oops is that me is that me there Right off the backs of resurrection and the infilling of the spirit of Jesus, it, it says that they were daily, every single day they were going to the temple and they were in one another's homes, sharing meals, fellowshipping together. And by the way, a big part in Acts 2.46. Is they were just giving their money and their things and their stuff freely. Isn't it amazing how this pandemic has put stuff, things, money clothes in its proper place. It doesn't even seem to matter like it used to. We need less temple, more home. Yeah. Here's why the first century Christians went to that temple every day. Please don't miss this. Sometimes in 2020, we it's difficult for us to make the contextual understanding and translation. They went to the temple because the architecture of the temple was built in such a way that they could hear their pastor preacher teach the story of Jesus. Yeah. The actual arches, if you will, of the temple were used 
it was an amplification tool mm. so that the followers and worshipers of Jesus could mm. hear from not self-appointed teachers and pastors, mm. Mm. but appointed pastors and preachers. The Bible calls it apostles doctrine. What does that mm. mean? That literally means people who are gifted and graced by God to teach the story of Jesus. But they're not just a teacher. They're a teacher of teachers. Mm. They're a leader of leaders. Mm. They're a pastor of pastors. Mm. And so it's important for us that God gives gifts to men and women to be teachers of teachers, leaders mm. of leaders, pastors of pastors. And their teaching and training of scripture is so empowering and invaluable that the church may continue to grow in its mm. interaction wow. with the person of Jesus. But the temple was a vehicle to amplify. The teaching. Now, wow. this is similar to when Jesus pushed out on the water in a boat and he used the water as an amplification tool wow. so that everyone could hear his teaching. Wow. My brothers and sisters.